but you look back at a lot of the old antique blocks you know, back to the early 20th century there's some incredible shapes both from um, a carving point of view the, the block bait maker being able to make them but also from the milliner's point of view being able to make a hat on it the wood we get comes in uh, sawn boards which is just the tree trunk sawn up into planks most blocks are made up of glued pieces it's then sawn up into approximately the right width pieces and planed I've always loved working with wood since I was a little kid. My dad worked with wood and I've always found a lot of pleasure in making things out of wood. It's just an amazing material. It's so nice to be part of that process where you're making a block to a shape, to a design, but then the milliner takes it to a whole other level, not just with making the hat to the shape of the block, but then what they do with it afterwards, how it's worn, how it's trimmed, how it's, you know, what the colours are, everything like that. So it's the whole, the whole process through. We're both part of it, you know, the milliner and the block maker. A hundred years ago, there were many more block makers than there are today because many more people wore hats than they do now, particularly men's hats. Um, everybody wore top hats, bowler hats, you know, trilbies, feathers, whatever. I think I've always been fascinated with tools, um, just an object that can perform a function and how it performs its function. I get really focused on what I'm doing, so it's not like I'm thinking about other things, but you're really focused on the way the wood needs to be cut and where you've got to change direction with your tool, and you see you're pretty focused on what you're doing. I love all the, the hand-carved parts. There's some parts that are obviously done on machines, uh, roughing out, sawing and planing and that sort of thing, but the, the fine detail of getting into the shape, the finished shape, I really enjoy that proportion and how the shapes work together and how the curves come out of one curve going one way into another curve going the other and designing the line and the shape um, and then transferring that from a piece of paper into the block um, that's very satisfying seeing things just in a two-dimensional way first uh, and then seeing how that transfers into a three-dimensional shape because really a block is often just a starting point um, it will give you the shape but there's so much more you could do with it afterwards it really takes careful design but sometimes you've got to think about the process for quite a while I might have a hat from a customer but it might be you know, a few days before I've come up with the method to produce it the handwork is really crucial to, to get the final shape and it's really about um, just, just feeling the shape as you go uh, and making adjustments using the light. Light is very important. Um, being able to see the profile of it and, and light and shadow is very useful, particularly if you're trying to make a smooth surface. The light, the way the light will shine across the block can give you an indication of where the shape is not quite right, where you need to take some off if you've got a hill and behind the hill there's going to be a shadow. Probably the, the biggest satisfaction in it is the finished product. Whatever I make, um, whether it's a simple block or it's you know, very complicated it's just seeing the process all the way through and having the finished object that's sanded smooth and varnished and you see the final shape there's a, a big satisfaction in me in the final product it's, it's almost like that's what I work for is to see the end result <laughs>